Hello, hello, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I always like give myself the ick when I say that, but how we do it, my friends? I'm coming to you today with three variations on how to draft both a kimono and a batwing sleeve. Now, these sleeves are both grown on one piece patterns. So, by grown on, this here is an inset sleeve or a set in sleeve. You can hear both of them said in the fashion industry where you insert it into the armhole of your bodice. You'd be sewing this up at the side seams, at the shoulder seams, and then you would be sewing this up as a separate panel and inserting it into the armhole here. With a kimono and a batwing sleeve, we actually grow the sleeve onto the bodice. So it's all cut out as one piece. And I'm gonna be giving you three variations of it. Now, the difference between a kimono and a batwing, um, you might also hear it referred to as a dolman, is just how it attaches um, to the bodice. A bat wing comes a little bit lower down, it is a little bit more common, um, but there's a lot of discrepancies that you can do with this. There's a lot of design variations. As the designer, you can play around with scale and proportion, how long you want this sleeve, the amount of volume you want to incorporate into this sleeve. And so let's just begin. I am going to be using a quarter scale um, range of blocks today. These are available to my members inside the DPL Atelier. But the measurements I will be telling you further down the line will be applied to full scale blocks. So at one point we may be raising our shoulder by 1.5 centimeters. That is to be applied to a full scale block and not times by four and scaled up. So I hope that that makes sense. I'm just doing it on quarter scale blocks because my studio isn't big enough for me to have a really nice fancy overhead camera setup. So let's jump into it then. I'm gonna show you a, the most basic way of creating a bat wing and that is to um, position essentially your sleeve to your bodice block like so. Now you can disregard your darts. You can have this as a loose fitting garment but what you're gonna end up doing is actually just extending the sleeve onto the um, bodice like so. However, it's really important that the only way we can do that is by accounting for the ease in the sleeve head. So if I get my back bodice piece back in shot as well, this here up to our first notch should, if you walk your pattern, and by doing that, you would just pivot this. And again, there's no seam allowance on this block here. So when you're working with a bodice block or basic blocks, um, unless you've drafted them to include seam allowance, we are working in the rawest form and seam allowance should be added at the end. So the first thing you want to do, walking this sleeve block up to the notch, we then want to walk it to the shoulder point here. And you'll see I've already made a small mark. And then you wanna repeat it on the back. So you'd be walking it up to the notches. They should align. It's a bit tricky with a quarter scale block. And then from the notches to the shoulder line, we're gonna mark by there as well. Now these two marks indicate how much ease is in this sleeve head. And so before we attach it to the bodice like so, and again, the notch in this sleeve aligns to the shoulder seam, aligns to the um, seam line here. So we know that there is a good, maybe as up to five centimeters ease in your full scale sleeve pattern um, that needs to be removed and accounted for before we add this to our bodice block. And so to do that, you can lower your sleeve head, redraw it and remeasure it. Um, again, you're gonna see me doing this by hand, but using a French curve or a pattern master, which is this here, you'll be able to draw in accurate lines. Again, as a quarter scale, this can be quite fiddly, but you can lower your sleeve head and remeasure that way. And once that kind of aligns and your notch is meeting your shoulder seam, you have removed the ease from this sleeve piece. And so once we've accounted for our sleeve head ease and removed that, I've cut out a new pattern piece here. So I've just lowered that sleeve head, um, remeasured and rewalked my pattern to make sure everything is correct and in alignment. And now we can start drafting our bat wing pattern. So once we're ready, I'm just gonna trace off my basic bodice block. I'm going to be doing a bit of basic dart manipulation. And so what I'm going to do is actually transfer my um, shoulder dart into my center front a little bit by here. So I'm just gonna trace it off. And if you're unsure of what I'm doing, I do have a free pattern cut in basics course. If you head on down to the um, caption and video description, I will link that for you. And that gives you a good um, overview of 
dart manipulation and how we can, as the designer and pattern cutter, um, move this volume around the bodice without compromising on the fit. So I'm just going to close my shoulder dart and open it up into my center front here. And I'm just going to close that there. But if you don't have darts, if you just have a basic fit and bodice block without darts, then you will actually find that easier. So you can just skip this step. But the premise and the first step is to trace off your basic bodice block. Before, we're then going to, now that we have removed the ease of our sleeve head, and we've accounted for that ease in the sleeve head, I'm then just going to align it. And you might be able to faintly see the line running down the center of my sleeve here. I'm just going to align that to the shoulder point and you can just trace that off as you see fit. And with my pattern master, I'm just going to extend that shoulder seam. And then what you can do is essentially just true this into the base of your bodice. And this is creating a really nice bat wing shape. You can do that by hand and true it out if you so wish. could look something like this and again the front and back of this could be exactly the same minus the neckline so for the back pattern piece you could literally just transfer your back neckline And this could be your pattern piece for a bat wing. Now, of course, you can absolutely um, make sure that the space between here is as wide or as narrow as you like. It would be a case of sampling. So your front pattern piece has this neckline and your back pattern piece has this neckline and that would essentially be the only difference in them and you absolutely could flip the pattern which would create a seamless pattern in itself. So it's a case of playing around. You may want to true out this angle here. And by truing out, all we mean is making sure that it doesn't have any um, nasty right angles, anything that doesn't follow the organic shape of the human figure. So this is a first example. This is the most basic and beginner friendly example. So it's just a case of literally extending this sleeve minus the ease in the sleeve head onto that shoulder seam and just playing around with volume and everything there. Of course, you're gonna to want to add your seam allowance to this. And then we'd also look at just kind of ignoring or abolishing the darts or transferring that volume into another area on the bodice as quickly illustrated there. The next technique I'm gonna show you is how to draft a basic kimono block. So, I've just again traced off a basic bodice block without any darts. This could be um, an outer garment block, something that's just like a basic, almost shapeless coat drafted to your measurements. And again, we have all of these tutorials inside the DPL Atelier. Um, but again, the front and back can be the same. The front and back bodice can be the same minus the neckline. So again, I would just draw that in here. So this would be my back neckline, this would be my front neckline. So just make sure as you are cutting out your pattern pieces, you do so um, correctly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually raise my shoulder point by 1.5 centimeters. Now, when I say 1.5 centimeters, I do mean that on a large scale, full scale pattern. So just so that you can see what it should look like by here, I'd be raising that up. I mean, 1.5 centimeters would be this, literally, but for the purpose of just kind of showing you what it should look like, it's gonna be a little bit more subtle. And I'm going to connect to this point here. And I'm just raising that shoulder to allow for space. It's gonna give a nicer silhouette and fit of the sleeve. And so we just want to raise that up so that it complements the body and the changes we're making to the pattern. You then want to extend this line to the length of your desired sleeve. Now it doesn't have to be a full length sleeve. And again, if you want it to, you can use a sleeve pattern like so, making sure that you've accounted for the ease. So if you want it to be a full length sleeve, you can use a sleeve block that already fits you and just deduct it or deduce it that way. It could be a shorter sleeve. So I'm just gonna make sure that I am lining up my pattern master to that. And I can determine whatever length of the sleeve I want. 
Again, if this is going to be taken from an existing pattern, you can finish off the end and you can add about two centimeters to this. Play around, again, as the designer, you have all of this, you know, in your toolkit. It is your job to play around with different sizes and proportions, sample it up and see the effect. But you may want to extend this down by about two or three centimeters and just see if you prefer that effect. Um, but what I will say is, obviously, we are using half the sleeve here. So on the previous one as well, I'm not lining it up here. This is the continuation of the shoulder line along your sleeve. So this is why we're kind of working in halves. Um, so you just want to determine, you know, the sleeve width as well, but don't forget you are working in halves. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the distance between this point here and this point here, and I will measure that distance. On my quarter scale pattern, that's 5.5, but obviously on a full scale pattern, that could be 18, that could be 22, whatever it is to draft it to fit you. So a quarter of 5.5 is what I'm gonna mark from this point here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark a quarter of that measurement down to this point here. So whatever that is for you, again, it could differ for everybody depending on how you've drafted your block. And I'm just gonna measure down. This is just gonna give us a nice balance of where our sleeve comes in. And again, I'm then gonna measure out maybe two or three centimeters, full scale width, two or three centimeters. On a quarter scale, on a quarter scale block, don't pay attention to the actual measurements I'm doing. But if I was doing this on a full scale block, I'd be bringing it out two or three centimeters. And then I'm just going to square off, meaning I'm lining up my pattern master to this line here. And I'm just going to square that off to intersect this line. And so I've used the centre front here and I've squared off, measuring out two centimetres from this point here, which is a quarter of the measurement between these two points just to create balance in the pattern on where this sleeve comes back into the bodice. And then I'm going to simply square down and I can then blend that back into my hemline or hip line. And so this here is a very basic kimono pattern and like before, this is your front neckline, this is your back neckline. And so you really do need to establish a well-fitting basic bodice block. Well, that was difficult to say. You really do need to establish a well-fitting basic bodice block in order to start elaborating it into more interesting designs like the kimono or the bat wing. And so finally, once you've got this, you can also turn this kimono into a bat wing. So I'm gonna show you the third and final technique. And it's really simple. It is just a case of doing slash and spread. Now again, if you go and sign up for my free pattern cutting basics course slash and spread and dart manipulation which are two pattern cutting manipulation techniques i've used in this video are covered inside that free three video course it's really high value beginner friendly but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to draw a line from this point here to my highest point on my shoulder I was gonna do it by eye then, but then I forgot I was actually doing a demonstration. <laughs> and I'm just going to intersect this and slash and spread it with a pair of scissors. Now, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna have to cut up and along the edge so that I can create a hinge, otherwise my paper will not pivot and move. And then what you're gonna be able to see is that I can actually split this apart and I can start to introduce even more volume. And so of course, the more volume, the more of that beautiful drape you're gonna get around the underarm in a bat wing design. And then what you wanna do with a little bit of masking tape, it would help it if I had, I'm not very good at Blue Peter of like, here's one I've done earlier. I should have laid out everything I need before pressing film, but there we are. With a little bit of masking tape, you can stick that down and then again, true out this line here. So you may want to turn that into a curve. You may want to drop that down ever so slightly. I'm just gonna draw on my table here, but obviously you would slide some paper underneath. And this can become your bat wing shape there as well. So don't forget on all three examples to add your seam allowance. You would be tracing over this so you could trace over this with a bit of tracing paper or a bit of paper with a tracing wheel and you could draw in your front piece. I would advise doing this with a pattern master and not hand drawing it, do as I say, not as I do. 
which is terrible really, isn't it? <laughs> it's terrible if I'm giving you a uh, tutorial. I mean, there's nothing wrong with hand drawing it, guys. So the issue comes, I'm teaching you luxury fashion. This would not pass in a couture house, okay? This wobbly line, especially with my essential tremors, as we all know I suffer with, um, this wobbly line would not pass. I'm throwing millimeters away. It's going all over the shop. You might think this looks quite accurate, um, seeing you can see the pattern underneath. For home sewing, absolutely fine. For you, as a one-off garment, your measurements, absolutely fine. Um, so when I'm berating myself, saying like, this wouldn't fly, this doesn't work, um, and again, you would just transfer your bust line in carry that across, your waistline, carry that across. Transferring your horizontal balance lines like that is really important where it, when it comes to fitting. So make sure that you are labeling it. This would be your center front, you'd be cutting on fold. But um, back to my point, if this was in a couture house, by doing it by hand, you are throwing millimeters away. And especially if you did come to grade that, if we're gonna be going up or down in sizes, millimeters turn into centimeters. And so those little things that might be off or a small, tiny little error, actually becomes a big, big problem as you're scaling it up and down um, in production. But for the purpose of home sewing, when I say, you know, do as I say, not as I do, tracing over it by hand, like that is fine. <laughs> just trying to teach you you know the traditional right way but as I always say there's no real hard and fast rules in fashion which is why I love it so anyway thank you for attending my TED talk let's move on what you want to then do is obviously add your seam allowance now I'm adding a centimeter here this would be about a full size pattern um, you would want to give thought to the kind of seam construction you'll be using so that might be a centimeter around the shoulder seam around the side seams here you may wish to notch this so that when you come to piece your patterns together at the sewing machine, you're helping yourself out with um, piecing it together accurately. And so it might be a centimeter all around there, add a notch there so that when I'm cutting out my front and back piece, I know that I'm lining this up correctly. Your hem allowance could be 2.5 centimeters. It could be four centimeters. You wanna give thought to, again, how you are going to hem the garment and your neckline might be half a centimeter. Are you gonna be using a collar or a facing? Um, half a centimeter around the neckline just reduces bulk, which is why we tend to favor having smaller seam allowance round tighter areas on the pattern because you do just want to reduce bulk around those areas on your body. It's not going to be very comfortable for the wearer if you've got a really chunky multi-layered bits of fabric right around your neck. Um, so once you're done with that you can pull that away and this is what your front pa pattern piece would look like and your back one obviously as illustrated would just have the raised neckline. Um, cut those out, sew them up, sample them and then you can absolutely play around with introducing volume as you see fit. This is a really um, simple but exciting pattern manipulation technique just to explore different sleeve styles. At the time of filming, my members and I are coming towards the end of a Jersey basic framework cycle and we are about to open the doors to the DPL Atelier for the final framework cycle of the year where we're going to be focusing on a jumper and batwing and kimono sleeves really lend themselves to like cosy warm knitwear. Um, perfect for sweater weather for the colder months coming in. So if you would like to join the waitlist, if you want to come and join us inside the DPL Atelier, please do. The doors are going to be open for two weeks only. Um, and you, it's all optional. The framework cycle is optional. You do not have to follow along to benefit from the membership. We have hundreds of video tutorials. I can't bloody say that. We have hundreds of video tutorials <laughs> helping you draft basic bodice blocks to your measurements so that you can start to hack it into more elaborate designs like this. The moment you have a foundational block that fits your body, the world is your playground with fashion, and you can start to, with confidence, hack it into this pattern, knowing that the foundations already fit you. Um, so, without chewing your ear off, thank you for joining me on YouTube, and yeah, I'll catch you on the flip side, my fashion family. Peace and love, stay safe, keep creative.